So what's speech or selection? If you're watching, you probably already know what it is. You have a data set and you're trying to build a machine learning model. You probably don't need all the data and columns that feed into your model because that's just gonna confuse the model itself and lead to terrible results like overfitting or underfitting or whatever it is. So how do you choose the right columns and data that will have the most impact on your model? Choosing the right feature selection method is like choosing the right weapon in whatever video game you play. It completely depends on your data and the goal of the project itself. Here's a list of supervised techniques. In today's video, we'll only cover filtered-based approaches, but in future videos, we'll cover wrapper-based approaches and embedded approaches. So what does supervised mean? Supervised learning basically means that you're going to use labeled data to train algorithms and predict outputs for new unseen data, while unsupervised machine learning deals with unlabeled data and aims to basically discover hidden patterns within that data itself. So first, let's start with filtered-based approaches. So filtered-based approaches assess the value of each feature without considering the performance of a specific machine learning algorithm. Basically, you're evaluating just the data itself to understand how the data correlates with each other. Now, within filtered-based approaches, you actually have four techniques. The first one is called information gain. So to explain it like I'm five, information gain is where we look at different things and see which ones are the most helpful for finding answers. It's sort of like sorting out toys into groups based on their colors or shapes to find the most interesting ones. So your code might actually kind of look like this. You have your labeled data and your unlabeled data, and you run it through the information gain model to evaluate the most important features. And then the output might look something like this. So the graphic that you're seeing, it's trying to understand what attributes or features contribute to say getting diabetes, for example. The higher the number that you're seeing on the visual, the more important the feature is to understand what leads to diabetes. The next technique, the chi-squared test. It's basically a very simple statistical test that helps us understand if things are related or just happen by chance. It's sort of like playing a game to see if two things like eating corn and feeling happy correlate with each other. So we'll run the data through the test and you'll see your feature either fall either outside the bounds or inside the bounds. If it's outside the bounds, you'll know that the two features are not correlated with each other. If it's obviously inside the bounds, they are correlated with each other. The next one, Fisher score. It's a way to find out which things are most important in the group. It's sort of like giving points to toys based off how special they are. The toys with more points are the ones that we should pay attention to because they're the coolest and the most interesting. So your code and your visualization might look something like this. The more points that you're seeing on the graph, the more important the feature is. So you can pick those features and run it through and build your machine learning model that way. The fourth technique is called the missing value ratio. It's a way to find out how many things are missing in the group. It's sort of like counting how many puzzle pieces are missing from a puzzle. If there are too many missing pieces, then it might be hard to complete the puzzle and then understand the whole picture, right? So likewise, if there are too many features that have missing data, the feature itself may not really work for the model. So as you can see from the code, we're basically just looking at how much missing data there is in the data set itself. And so we're gonna probably pick the features that have the most data that's not missing. So that's basically it. We've covered four filtered based approaches that you could use on your data to figure out which features are the most important and the most impactful for your machine learning model.